so welcome you uh, friends in the last uh, sessions of our the network theory syllabus uh, that is the module number 5 and uh, today we will initiate our discussions over the filter design that is more specifically under the head of the syllabus we talk about passive filter design okay so as far as the thesis content is concerned even we do not required to go into the depth of the passive filter design but still i would insist that it is a very very interesting mathematical uh, model okay and one of the most widely utilized uh, application in the label of uh, circuit label engineering okay as i uh, conveyed you at the very beginning that we if you talk about the realization of ng any engineering applications it is broadly divided in three categories that is the system level engineering the circuit level engineering and finally the ultimate is the device level engineering or when you go from hierarchically from down to top that is the device level engineering intermediate is circuit level engineering and then at the most the topmost level is obviously the system level engineering irrespective of the hierarchy okay irrespective of the hierarchical domain i would say okay. so uh, as far as the module number is 5 is concerned so here you can appreciate that uh, we already uh, talk about the graph theory and uh, now we are leading to the uh, end of the sessions you can say and in this case uh, you would uh, we would focus over the uh, classification of filters and the characteristic of ideal filters more specifically i will reward it i will maybe mix up both but the um, as as far as this sub module is concerned uh, i would dedicate two lectures over this particular topic and we will first come across the characteristic of the ideal filters and then we will conclude our discussions with the classifications of the filters okay so let us go ahead obviously as far as the syllabus is concerned um, i have been already advised you at the very beginning of this particular module that for the filter design you can uh, uh, you may not get much help from the me van welken but though the fundamental aspect of the network function and two port analysis is also being utilized very widely as far as the filter design is concerned but as far as the syllabus approach is concerned you can obviously refer the engineering circuit analysis uh, more specifically the basic circuit theory fundamentals of circuit analysis okay uh, by the alexander and sidoku uh, the fundamentals of electrical engineering by babro and the chakravarti so these are the books you can fix up to gain more knowledge if you find your area of interest in this particular direction applications so as i told that as far as the filter is concerned it is one of the most widely utilized uh, device or the circuit uh, as far as the system level applications are concerned so that means whenever you are going to form a system obviously the filter okay use of one or more than one filters are uh, the one of the integral part of any particular uh, system okay and more specifically the signal conditioning circuits okay so you can work it out the higher uh, level of analog and digital circuits so there we will come across the signal conditioning circuits under the head of analog electronics and the digital electronics so as far as the filters are concerned it is very widely utilized right from the heavyweight power systems applications to the micro or the nano level uh, micro electronics and nano electronics circuits it's a widespread applications in the area of both the what you call electrical sciences uh, applications are concerned okay yeah. so let us go ahead with our discussions so what is basically filter so filter is a device or a circuit you can say which is used to transmit signals within a specific frequency range okay and at the same time it does not allow or you can say that it rejects the other frequencies 
falling beyond the cutoff range i would say okay the other way to define you can say it is an electrical network which is used to allow the specific range of frequencies only it's called field so you can have your own way of definition purposely conditionally that it should fulfill the requirement or it should serve the purpose of the application okay so obviously as far as the filters are concerned it is broadly you can one of way to classify is that you can say that it is broadly categorized under the two head that is the passive filters and the active filters okay that is how you are going to classify this that is based on the type of elements or device you are supposed to use to design a filter it is very obvious that if an operational amplifier like active devices because operational amplifiers is made of hundreds to the thousands or tens of thousands of transistors okay and the transistors is a three terminal device which is typically used in amplifier and the transistor can also be modified as a two terminal device to use it as a crystal diode right so i am talking about the construction stage fine so that is how the practically we generally manufacture okay so uh, It, it it has a purpose though theoretically you study diode first and then you jump to transistors when 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 it comes to the uh, manufacturing we the manufacturer usually uh, by default manufactures transistors and as and when they need the diodes they typically the responsibility is the job is to ground one of the terminal okay the specific terminal to acquire the uh, desired amount of the uh, exchange between the pn junctions that you call is uh, a diode or a crystal diode right so if you have involved the operational amplifiers into the system or any kind of electronic circuits okay devices then it is considered as a active filter if not if it is typically a combination of rlc elements that means either it is a rc type or whether it is a rl type or whether it is a lc type so each have a, their own applications but the rc types and the lc types are the most widely used applications okay lc type we preferably use under the head of the transmission lines whenever uh, say tomorrow a uh, uh, broadband service provider lay a cable okay from their terminal point to your uh, home or to your office okay so your optical fiber communication you talk about or the broadband you are talk about okay is an application of that so optical fiber is a very different application so i would say that it is a shielded uh, twisted pair okay so that is an example of your lc type of filters fine right? similarly the transmission lines you see is the distribution lines you see that is also an, comes under the head of the lc type of the network okay uh, if you talk about the antenna and wave pro propagation that is the connecting the uh, antenna uh, head with the Um, communication links or the data processing links so that is also comes under the filters okay not only that if you talk about a device we have use many kind of filters like some filters we call the pre filters so that means that is kept at the initial stage of the device and it's a primarily job of a pre filter is to reject the any incoming noise so that means whenever you want to access a signal remember the signal is always operating at a frequency that you call the central frequency okay or in a simpler language you call it resonant frequency so that that resonant frequency or noise that means an unwanted signal or a natural if a signal like a cosmic signal wave okay can also exist and it may also try to interfere with your information signal because both are present at the same frequency range fine right? so in that case the pre filter is primarily used to reject the any uh, only to allow to pass the incoming signals based on its characteristics that we will discuss little later and rejecting the unwanted signals other than that frequency range okay so that is your called the pre filters the same work is also done at the end last stage of the design circuit signal conditioning so what is the purpose behind it that whenever you are going to classify or whether you are going to generate a signal whether you are going to process a signal so before going to transmit to the end user or to the receiver end okay you wanted to bypass uh, or primarily you can say that you wanted to reject or suppress the any kind of noise because of that particular man made system or because of that man made components so that is called your job of your uh, the filter 
which is primarily designed to fit with the end stage. So finally, we generate a desired signal. We pass it through that particular filter so that the only meaningful information should allow to pass through the transmit through the transmitter. But the any noise which is generated between the pre-filter to the final stage during the processing of that signal conditioning device, it should not allow to transmit also. It should not amplify also and then we reject it. And then finally, we use a power amplifier to give the desired amount of power so that the signal can recover the desired distance and reach to the destination successfully okay, okay, or without any attenuation. So without any attenuation means the attenuation will be there, but <coughs> the level of attenuation should be such low that the receiver can receive it faithfully. Okay. Then the, there are some other way to classify also, though we will again come over this for topic at the end of the discussion. Okay. So that is the arm impedance. Okay. So we will see the two kind of filters, the practical filters and the prototype filters. So it is broadly again categorized in two categories. That is the constant K filter and the M derived filter. Okay. What is the purpose of constant K filter? Generally constant K filters are used typically for the prototype development. And in that case, what we do that we hear Z1 and Z2 are in indicating the series impedance and the shunt impedance of the network. That means a filter. There is a filter and which has a series, some series impedance and which has that has also some shunt impedance. So overall series impedance is going to be designated by Z1, whereas the overall shunt impedance of that particular network or filter is designated by Z2. So the criteria is that the product of Z1, Z2 should be a free from the frequency. So therefore it is equal to R square. Remember it's not equal to Z square because Z is a frequency dependent uh, component. Okay, not R naught. R naught is a purely registering component. Similarly, that there is another way which is widely actually utilized for the real filter design that is the M derived filter. Okay, so in this case, the shunt arm, the series arm is a represented series arm of the T section filter. So that means the delta structure or the T structure and the shunt arm uh, is of uh, made of the um, pi structure or you can say that it is the delta structure okay and the multiple of this t arm and the, uh, this uh, t arm or delta arm you can say and on the other hand the multiple of, of the product of derivative of the, uh, the multiple of t arm and the derivative of the pi r or you can say that the multiple of the star and the derivative of the delta okay is the represented by the number of m's respectively okay the, those multiples are represented that number one should be multiple of the derivative but it is represented by some number of m so that is called your m derived filter okay. here is obviously the simplest way which is the most popular one is uh, to classify the filter any filter application is depending on the frequency characteristic so here it is broadly divided in four different categories you can say that is the low pass filter LPF in short we call then the high pass filter that is in that case we call the HPF high frequency filter uh, high pass filter I'm sorry and then the band pass filter that is called the BPF and the band stop filter BSF or sometimes it is also called as BRF that is band rejection filter or sometimes uh, some authors also recognized as a BES that is band eliminated filters okay, or elimination filters. You can see. So whether you call it elimination or the suppression or the stop okay, or the rejection, the meaning is same. So broadly it has a four category. Now how we are going to classify these four filters, low, frequent, low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter and the band rejection filters okay, that we will come a little later under the head of the frequency characteristic as you can say. So the some more facts I would like to share you here you that when you talk about the classification of the filter based on the frequency range okay or the characteristic of the uh, band stop or band pass filter okay uh, the cutoff frequency the characteristic of the cutoff frequency rather I would say so in this case the characteristic of a filter is then decided based on the three different analogy obviously number one is the characteristic impedance that is the Z naught like in case of K filter classification that we will discuss in little detail, we saw that the product of Z1, Z2 should be equal to R square, not Z square. So obviously the characteristic of impedance is very, very vital. Okay. Number two, the passband. That means the range of frequency 
which should be allowed to pass through that particular filter with very low attenuation okay attenuation that means the amount of loss is experiencing during the processing of the signal okay also if the attenuation is high so obviously the signal strength is very low signal quality will be very low or you can say that no signal will allow to pass if the attenuation is very low on the contrary to that so that means the maximum amount of signal you are allowing to pass through that particular frequency range so the very low attenuation or ideally you would say no attenuation so is called the pass band and at the same time when where there is a very high attenuation or ideally infinite attenuation that means no signal is allowed to pass that range is called the stop band okay so how we are going to decide this pass band and stop band so we are going to divide this or define this pass band and stop band using a cut off frequency that is called your fc okay and this cut off frequency is demonstrated by the pass band and demonstrated the uh, border line uh, between the uh, pass band and the stop band okay so remember that. So here you see that probably this uh, slide uh, is this picture is of you can say that consists of uh, the info meaning of the infinite words. Okay, so the, under the head of one umbrella, I would I try to show you that the classification of the filter based on the characteristic of the frequency. Okay, how you can broad it in terms of the pass band and frequency band. So let us see one by one. When you talk about the low pass filter, that is the LPF filter. So low pass filter is ideally a filter which is used to pass any particular signal or the bundle of the frequencies or the range of frequencies between the zero hertz to the cutoff frequency. Now let's see if a particular application cutoff frequency is one kilohertz. Understood? So if the cutoff FC is equal to one kilohertz. So that means that particular filter is designed in such a way that it doesn't matter how it is classified, but the filter is designed in such a way that it is used to pass any particular frequency between the zero hertz to one kilohertz, and anything above one kilohertz, that is the 1.1 kilohertz signal, will not allow to pass. But 0.9 kilohertz is allowed to pass. That is the ideal way. Fine. So if you see this pass band is indicated over here. In this frame, you can say that this one is the zero hertz, and this FC is equal to one kilohertz. So, if it is a one kilohertz, so any frequency which lies, any frequency component or harmonics which lie between zero hertz to one kilohertz will allow to pass, and rest all are the rejected. So, you can say that as far as this particular type of filter is concerned, so zero to FC is nothing but it is a pass band. Okay. So, any frequency spectrum which is falling between zero hertz to that means more than zero hertz, but less than two one kilohertz is allowed to pass, and anything above one kilohertz does not allow to pass, or it is called a stop band. Okay, so in this case, okay, in this ideal scenario, when uh, remember that there is no signal or no information existed zero hertz, fine, you cannot grasp it. So obviously there is a some finite number. So practically, I would say that your supply frequency. Over here, over the plug, you can see in the other one on bike. Okay, uh, so that is actually available at the 50 hertz as far as the Indian standards are concerned, supply standards are concerned. So that 50 hertz I can count as compared to one kilohertz as a very low signal, right? Okay, anything is even 10 times is considered as a theoretically very high value. 100 times is considered as infinite, or 1000 times, or even 10 to 3 times is considered ideally as an infinite. So I would say that if 50 hertz is my low frequency signal, so if I will multiply by the 10 times, so it is 500 hertz. If I will multiply by the 20 times or 50 times, it is 1 kilohertz or the 5 kilohertz. So the factor is remember more important. In 50 hertz, the factor is 5 into 10 to 1, and in case of kilohertz, it is 10 to 3. So it's a 100 times of amplification or shift. In frequency, fine, or in upgradation in frequency, fine. So whenever there is a switching of the hundred times or more, you can ideally consider as infinite, fine. Third, sorry, practically considered as a infinite, fine. So infinite means practically is a very very high values, fine. So in that case, this range is okay. This type of filter, as we said, which is allowed to pass between the one ideal range is zero, and so anything of uh, below the cutoff frequency. so that is called the low frequency now the characteristic of high, hyper high pass frequency or can you define the high pass uh, filter 
So of the high pass filter in terms of the characteristic of frequency can be defined as that it is a filter or it is a circuit which is used to pass any signal in the spectrum okay uh, above of uh, the cutoff frequency range. So let's say if the FC is equal to again 1 kilohertz. So now this is the kind of filter which will stop anything between 0 to 1 kilohertz but it allows 1 kilohertz and above anything to pass through it. So that is called your high pass filter. So remember low pass filter and high pass filter are something the ideal design. Okay. So no one filter can be practically designed with one cutoff frequency. Fine. So as I said that the 0 hertz is a limitation. You cannot use it practically. No signal exists at the 0 hertz. So obviously even if you talk about your supply frequency. Okay. So that is existed the 50, 50 hertz. So 50 is not 50 hertz is not a 0. But obviously it, it is a very very low value low magnitude frequency okay as compared to the one kilohertz you can say right so therefore it is a negligible that is something you can say so typically then the next two uh, the widest use of uh, applications are the band pass filter and the band stop filter so hierarchically here you can also being noticed that that fc is equal to tending to infinite and zero to fc is the attenuation band Okay, so anything is the stop band or is called the attenuation band. Anything is allowed to pass is the pass band. Okay, so attenuation band or the stop band has the same meaning. Now the band pass filter. What is this band pass filter? It is a kind of filter which is used, which is designed, okay, to pass dedicated between any any signal or the spectrum dedicated between the two cutoff frequencies that is F1 and F2, where we are assuming that F1 is the lower cutoff frequency as compared to the F2. So if it is so, then in this demonstration, whether okay, in this particular slide here, you can observe that F1 is also representing the cutoff frequency, which has a lesser magnitude than that of the F2. F1 is okay, the lower than the F2. So I'm saying that here, that I'm assuming that F1 is a lower, lower cutoff frequency and F2 is a higher cutoff frequency. So it is a circuit which is used to pass any spectrum or any signal which falls between that falls between the F1 and F2 and anything which is falling below the F1 or higher than the okay above the F2 will be used to stop it. So what is your attenuation band? So your attenuation band is 0 to F1 and F2 to infinite and anything between F1 to F2 is allowed to pass. So this is the kind of filter what we call the band pass filter. So nowadays if someone is asked that whether the low pass filter is a band pass filter or not practically your answer is yes low pass filter is nothing but in a real life scenario it is a low frequency band pass filter you can say okay and high pass filter is nothing but it is again another band pass filter which is primarily a high frequency band pass filter okay because no infinite spectrum you can be able to pass practically because if you are designing that anything is above than fc is allowed to pass so let's say if FC is in our demonstration 1 kilohertz, then what is infinite? Infinite can be 1 megahertz, can be 1 gigahertz, can be 1 terahertz. Okay. So you cannot design that field bandwidth. Okay. Remember, larger the bandwidth you are providing, okay, more the consu data consuming rate will be high. Okay. So more data you are, okay, band, band, pass band you are allocating to a single channel, okay, or to a single spectrum. Okay. But remember that in this world, you must have already realized that there is a whole industry is running behind the bandwidth whether it is a defense application whether it is a commercial application whether it is your mobile services whether your your satellite based uh, communications whether you talk about okay any mode of the digital communication it always the bandwidth in this 21st century is one of the most precious thing we can say fine so uh, in this case the high pass filter is nothing but it again is is a one kind of a uh, theoretical band pass filter okay similar what is band stop filter now band stop filter is exactly have has uh, have the has the inverse characteristic of the band pass filter what is the band pass filter so band pass filter is used to pass anything any signal or spectrum which falls between the two cutoff point and reject rest of the arm okay but what band stop filter will do it will do the reverse it will notch or it will attenuate it okay so it will attenuate anything which is falling between the f1 and f2 Okay, so this kind of filter is actually used to jammer, used as a jammer in a, okay, defense has a very wide applications uh, into it. So this particular type of device is used to jam a particular frequencies. Okay, so it is used to stop that particular frequency and 
rest is in don't care condition so it may able to pass okay so practically the nose filter is nothing but it is an example of a band pass filter is a class of a band stop band stop filter okay so not band pass it's band stop filter clear so let us see the uh, bit of um, detail because under the of syllabus not not much we need to discuss but i would still suggest you that go uh, we revisit the design aspect of the filters whether you talk about the prototype filters of the m type of filter which is widely utilized because that will give you an interesting idea that how the passive filters are actually designed so let us see one by one so as in the beginning of the discussions uh, i conveyed you that the k type filter and m derived filter are nothing but it is another way uh, to class of uh, classification of the filter and this approach suggest to classify the entire design of the passive uh, filter design or whether it's the active filter design depending on the impedance okay uh, depending on the impedance so for uh, throughout our discussions we here we are going to consider the whenever we are going to term z1 so z1 is nothing but it is a typical combination of an entire series impedance whereas z2 is representing the shunt impedance of the filter okay now under the head of constant k filter so as its name says that constant okay and that constant is nomenclature as the k fine so that uh, that's how the inventor has initiated uh, this particular filter design roughly around uh, 60 years back okay so but in that uh, case the design has been kept on mature okay within the next uh, one decades or, or two decades more almost still you can say that 30 or 40 years back okay so this particular design aspect was mature and still it is a very very popular at the lab level or at the research level for the prototyping purpose uh, so that is how we can find it out so what constant k is that basically the domain is free from the frequency okay remember the domain is free from frequency i says that numerical constant is free from frequency not the filter filter is always is something which is actually dependent on frequency so the product of the series and shunt arm of that particular filter when you will multiply the series arm impedance and the shunt arm impedance this product should be free from the frequency variation so that is is called to r not square so because r is a real number and independent of frequency you can see so now uh, you see as demonstrated in this particular criteria that uh, all the uh, classification of filter which earlier we classified based on the characteristic of the frequency is broadly divided in these two domain that is depending on the impedance of the circuit network okay so uh, as far as the prototype filter or the k type filter is concerned uh, the overall design is again broad, broadly classified in two category only that is the t shape and the uh, pi shape or in other words you can say that the delta shape okay and the uh, star shape okay so star is nothing but it is a t shape and delta is nothing but it is a pi shape okay? as we have already i mean i will already conveyed you number of times under the head of the two port analysis and the network function so let us consider this particular circuit or the network okay so as far as the low pass filter is concerned here you can appreciate that the uh, because it is a t shape okay so one way is the t shape so whenever you are approaching for a t shape and again for our purpose for our discussion purpose as i told you there are three way to classify a filter that is one is the rc elements combination of the two because remember you are talking about the linear filters okay so you cannot use the rlc3 together so that is never being suggested second category okay very widely utilized that is the lossless filter practically we can say that is the lc type and then the third category as and when in needed it has a very limited applications okay but that i will tell you what is the reason behind it that why the first two are the more popular than that of the third one is the rl type filter so here under the head of discussion i am primarily considering the lc type of filters for my discussion purpose most of the time okay because remember the detailed design of the filters are not in your syllabus so the interested candidate those look ahead their career in this particular direction whether it is from the research point of view for the or is evergreen field or the design aspect in any manufacturing company okay for the dedicated product to develop dedicated product or application so that you can also refer so let's say if you see the low pass filters so in low pass filter if l is the my 
I am talking about LC. So if L is the amount of inductance is involved, so I will divide in two category, L by two and L by two. Why? Because the C in series inductance is being added. In series resistance is being added, but in series capacitor is being divided, right? Because it's inversely proportional to the frequency. In the in it's in its characteristic, it's inherited. Okay, you know it. So if L is the series impedance, that is the Z1. So the total amount of L is divided in two category because it is a T shape. Okay, it's a T shape, right? So the current is being okay divided if it is traveling from C to L. So in two category, so it is a star network. So in this star network, so overall L is divided in two category. That is L by two and L by two. So obviously in series, what is the total amount of L you will get? L by two plus L by two is equal to L. So to L is here representing some number of in, uh, inductances. Okay, so that is magnitude. In Henry, that you can decide depending on the classification. And if C is the amount of farad is involved or capacitance is involved, so that C single C is kept in shunt, okay, of that particular filter. So series arm is now replaced by, okay, is represented by L, and the shunt arm is replaced by the C because I you know that if the product of L and uh, C are of the same value in terms of the magnitude, if it is of the same value, so in that case theoretically, what will happen? Your L should be very very large. If C is a very small, if C is increasing, then L can decrease. So overall, the product of these two should be equal to R not square, from free from the frequency. Remember. So what we will do in case of pi design or the delta design, the reverse. Okay, because you will use the C, here we use the two series elements and one shunt element. So in case of pi, what we will do? We will use one series element and two shunt element. So that C is Okay, because it is a shunt element, so it is still connected in shunt. So overall, it is divided in two category. That is C by two and C by two because C is added, capacitance is added in parallel. So it is divided C by two and C by two. And what is L? That is a single L. So one single L is applied over there. Now here you see whether you consider this star shape or whether you consider this delta shape, whether you consider this T shape or whether you consider this pi shape, you will always get. This condition being satisfied, Z1, Z2 is equal to R not square. Similarly, I give you assignment that you try to design your high pass filters, band pass filter, and band stop filter on your own, and then we will verify. Go ahead. So, friends, if you continue the same design aspects, okay, or the copycat the same analogy with the rest of the filter uh, classes, depending on the characteristic of frequency. So we saw the discussions, uh, the design of the low pass filters okay, using the prototype approach or the K type filter design. How about the high pass filter? So obviously the high pass filter is nothing but it's a complement to the LPF. Yes, right, the low pass filter. So in case of low pass filter, as far as the T section design is concerned, T type is concerned, okay, design is concerned, there we use two series. Uh, inductances of L by 2, L by 2, and a capacity. So, in case of high pass filter, what you will do? You will change not only the position of the element, but the analogy also. Okay. So, remember to achieve the total amount of C in series. Okay. As far as the capacitance is concerned, what you will do? That if your design requirement is C amount of farad. So, in series, what you will do? You will use two twice of C two times. Because twice of C, because remember, capacitor is divided in series. So twice of C, okay, and plus twice of C. So it will give you the overall C in series. Whereas the inductance, there is only one inductance, so that is the L. Now, if this is the T section design of the high pass filter, okay, using constant K filter design approach, then what about the pi filter? So pi filter is an inverse of the, the T section design of the high pass. Filter. So what you will do here? There you have is two capacitance. Now here you use only one capacitance. Okay. There you have is one inductance. Now you will use two capacitance inductance. Remember, inductance is again divided in parallel. So to get the total amount of L in parallel, what you need to do? You have to generate twice of L, and that you will connect across the shunt, and then there is a one capacitance. So then you see here you can appreciate that this any design of the high pass or the low pass, whether you talk about filter in terms of characteristic impedance and any design, whether you talk about in terms of the characteristic impedance, okay, these are complements to each other as far as 
these four classifications are concerned okay right similarly if you talk about the band stop filters so band stop filter as i said that it is a typical combination of the two cut off frequencies remember theoretically the low pass filter or high pass filter is designed to is allowed to pass a range of frequency spectrums okay or it before the cut off frequency or higher the cut off frequency so that means the band stop filter is nothing but it is a typical or married combination of the high pass and low pass filters okay how is it let us see the band pass filter here you see that in case of band pass filter we use two because remember now you have two cut off points so let us be designated as one and two okay so you have a one or two capacitances or the one or two inductances so in case of t design what happened the two different kind of l's are coming into the existence okay and the two different kind of c's are going to the existence because you have two cut off frequencies f1 and f2 so if you look at the magnitude value from low frequency you got l by 2 l by 2 so now let's say i'm writing it rather than l for my better understanding l1 by 2 and l1 by 2 so there are two l1 by 2 l1 to applied in series now what about the uh, capacitance because i also have to add uh, another higher cut off frequency f2 beyond which doesn't beyond which anything should not be allowed to pass it should be rejected so that rejection portion will be handled in the series impedance arm by the twice of c1 as you can see in high pass filter design twice of c1 twice of c1 so all the subscript 1 is representing the z z1 okay so this total value in series impedance is equal to the equivalent value of z1 now what about the z2 so in z2 you will get from here c and from here you will get l so let us see designate l2 and c2 and both are connected in parallel because remember in series arm both are all are connected in series so these two are connected in parallel both will come in parallel which will ultimately decide this c2 will decide the contribute to the lower cut off frequency and l2 is the shunt arm of the higher cut off frequency c2 is the shunt arm of the lower cut off frequency that's how a band stop filter using the t structure has been formed what about the uh, the delta structure obviously you will do the reverse analogy so here we will get l1 and c1 and then there will be a two parallel uh, shunt arms okay of the lc network one is twice l2 and c2 by 2 and another is the c2 by 2 and the twice of l2 okay c1 by 2 c1 by 2 and c2 twice of l2 okay so twice of l2 okay and the c2 by 2 and c2 by 2 and twice of l2 so this will decide will give you the delta structure design of a band pass filter which is again a married combination of l1 and l2 well remember combination of l1 c1 is representing the total omnibound of impedance z1 that is the series impedance and the combination overall combination equivalent value of l equivalent and c equivalent that comes from the shunt arm impedance will give you the shunt impedance that is z2 in any circumstances the product of z1 and z2 should be independent from the frequency that is r not square okay? if it that so uh, i would suggest that i think some of have uh, find the difficulty as far as the band pass filter or band stop filter is concerned now the analogy of i hope that band pass filter is clear so again i will give you one more attempt to design on your own band stop filter so assume your analogy and attempt it so as you can appreciate that the band stop filter design has the reverse analogy in case of band pass filter if this l1 and c1 are connected in series so in band stop filter what you will do the complement the always the go for the dual of the network nothing else okay the duality property we already have been discussed at the module 1 okay beginning of the our series of discussion under the of network theory so here you will get the parallel lc structure okay this uh, twice r1 and l2 another couple of is also connected in series as far as the other armut of t is concerned so this part will again also converted in the parallel of l1 and c1 okay it's a structure what about this the shunt arm is earlier connected in parallel that is a parallel lc network so now it is a series lc tuning circuit so that is l2 and c2 if it is so what you will do in case of uh, the pi structure of the band stop filter again pi st uh, structure of the band stop filter is nothing but is the dual of or the complement of band okay complement of band stop filter in terms of characteristic of impedance and the dual of the circuit in terms of the design as okay so i hope that with this uh, you will get the clear understanding as far as the classifications and the characteristic of the filters are 
concerned. Let us go a little bit more depth as far as the design aspect is concerned, but that is I am leaving up to you that under the head of this syllabus, whether you want to reach that particular depth or not, okay, or from your career perspective, you wanted to go ahead with this particular design or not. So we will discuss those things, okay. So this is the last way to classify the filters, okay, that is the K type design constant, K type design we have seen. Now, what is your M derived filter? As we have seen that the series arm is of the T section and the shunt arm of the pi section. Okay, as far as the prototype filter is concerned, series arm of the T section and the shunt arm of the pi section should be multiple of the M, derivative of the M. Okay, so okay, multiple of the T arm is the series arm is the multiple and the shunt arm of the pi section is the derivative. Okay, or by the M respectively. Understood? So again, I repeat that the series arm of the T section is the multiple of M and the shunt arm of the pi filter okay is the derivative of m so okay so is multiplied by m and here is divided by m so again you will get this combination because of the typical way of designing it is called the m derived filters right so let's see one by one as far as the t filter design is concerned let's say for example if this is the t structure design okay of the of the theoretical circuit so in that case as far as the m derived filter is concerned this series arm okay, of the T structure design is the multiple of M. So now it is rather than Z1 by 2, it will be M Z1 by 2. If Z1 is equal to L1, so earlier if it is L1 by 2, now it is M times of L1. Understood? So here again M times of L1. If Z2 is equal to C, so now this Z2 is the derivative of the C. Remember here it is mentioned Z2 dash. So it is the derivative of the Z2C. Okay? So uh, of M. Fine? Not sorry, Z derivative of the and so that's why it is called the M derivative filters. So if it is the T structure design, what is the pi structure design? So pi structure design will be the dual of this particular network. So therefore, here you will get Z1 dash and here you will get the derivative of M. So in shunt arm, in case of pi filter, you are getting derivative of M. Here you have got the Z2. So Z2 can be in parallel, it will be divided. So to achieve the total amount of Z2 in case of the TR, here I require 2 Z2 and 2 Z2. So both the 2 Z2 is divided by the M. So here you are getting divided by M, whereas Z1 is the, okay, is the, that, that will be some other value. Remember, so remember Z2 dash and Z1 dash is representing some other numericals or symbolic representation, which is other than the Z2 or Z1, okay? So I hope that now these things would have been you already clear, no need to, for the further discussions. Obviously, as far as the, you can, you can count that attenuation, level of attenuation, both in terms of decibels or in the Napier here as far as the current or voltage ratios are concerned. Okay, so either you can define in the decibels here. Yeah. So in terms of the power scale, uh, voltage of or current scale, it is the 10 log. Uh, so sorry, it, it, it's in, in, in case of the power scale because it's actually it is the power which is being derived, which is being traveled or forced to travel. Well, okay, so it is the power transfer of the power or power gain is concerned. So if the power ratio in case of decibel bells is uh, 10 log uh, log base 10, so your decibels means multiple of 10. So it is 10 log base 10. Okay, P out upon P input. P out upon P input is the gain of the circuit. So it is the amount of power loss or the attenuation is increasing. So if the power loss is represented in terms of decibels, so what about the voltage? Now power is equal to V square by R or I square uh, into R. So therefore R is a constant. So that means your power output or power input is proportional to I square or V square. So if P is equal to factor of 10, what about the voltage scale or current scale? It is the root over two times. Okay, so multiply by two. Okay, square of that value magnitude will get so 20 log base 10 V naught by V i or I naught by I, uh, I. Okay, so that's how you can calculate. And what is the Napier? So it is basically the uh, natural, you can say the log or the base. E. Rather than base 10, you got the base E. So the attenuation in decibel, okay, is basically nothing but it is 8.686 times of attenuation in Napier. So it doesn't matter what scale you are referring, the most popular one is the basically decibels. Okay. So let us come back to our original discussions and to little bit of uh, developing a clear understanding as far as the basic relationship of, of the filters are concerned. Okay. So I, here I will consider one T-structure design and try to find out whether the design 
uh, because as uh, in the previous discussions, we, we kept on continuously saying that the T structure is the dual of the pi structure. So here, here we try to justify that how we will be able to do it. So overall, you should get the same amount of impedance, whether you are complementing the T structure with the pi structure of a particular network, whether it is a low pass filter is concerned or high pass filter or band pass filter or even band stop filter. Okay, so you can do, uh, you can test that whether the given circuit is the symmetrical in nature or not. Okay, how you can apply a two port network because like in this any filter is concerned, it is broadly an example of a two port network. You have one dedicated input port and output port. Okay, and, and with the help of any particular parameters, whether it is a Z parameter or Y parameter or ABCD parameters or even the hybrid parameter, you will be able to evaluate. Primarily, we use the Z parameter and the Y parameters. Okay, more popularly for analysis and specifically in the, as far as the power system application are concerned. Okay, the high voltage transmission lines or the distribution lines, low voltage, medium voltage distribution lines are concerned. That we can also evaluate in, with, with the help of ABCD parameters. So Z parameter ABCD is the most popular one along with the complement of the Y parameters. Hybrid is the special class which is widely utilized for the amplifiers, oscillators or the mostly the electronic circuit design. Okay, not the electrical circuit design. So how you can test the uh, symmetricity? So one is that the, you can compare the property of the, like for example, Z parameter, remember, uh, we said that if Z11 is equal to Z22, then you can set that the circuit is symmetric or not. There is one more way to classify the network or adjoin the network that is called the Barlett bisexual theorem. Though it is not in your syllabus, um, uh, but still I would uh, suggest you that go through a brief detail about the Barlett bisexual theorem um, under the head of the unsolved problems mentioned in chapter number 11 of the book of Emmanuel Welkenberg. So, Barlett bisection theorem says that any typical network can be classified, okay, into the two equal category, okay, and that's how it can be simplified as a network for the analysis purpose. And that is exactly what the symmetricity says, that if the, symmetry, if the circuit is symmetric in nature, so probably I would be able to cut the entire network from the middle of the arm and I will be able to divide it into two equal shape. So, for example, in this particular demonstration of T-shaped network is seen that in series arm there are two series impedance Z1 by 2 and Z1 by 2 and where the shunt arm impedance there is a Z2. So, if I will divide, uh, I will draw a dashed line and divide it across. So, Z1 by 2, Z1 by 2 will be separated into two arm but the Z2 have to be separated in two different parts. So, Z2 is a shunt arm. So, therefore, I should apply twice of Z2 in one class and twice of Z2 in another class and then in between if I will draw the line. So, then I can say that this below one, this structure one is nothing but, okay, this one, this structure is the barlet bisection or the symmetric circuit of the previous one as far as the T structure is concerned. So, the same analog you can apply, you can test for the uh, symmetrical pi network, okay, where in this case now you appreciate that shunt arm I don't require to uh, disturb because there are two shunt arm of the equal value, but there is one series arm. So, series arm I have to divide into two categories, that is if the, there is only one arm that is Z1, so now Z1 will be divided into two categories, Z1 by 2, Z1 by 2. So, that is called your Barnett bisection theorem and with the help of Barnett bisection theorem, you can simplify, okay, or you can divide even any complicated network into the two symmetric pieces. Okay, two equal pieces. Remember, the equality is different and symmetricity is different. Remember, okay. Good. Yes. Uh, go ahead. These uh, now rest of the slides uh, we are basically representing the some uh, standard mathematics which is being vital, uh, wide, widely utilized as far as the uh, transmission lines uh, analysis are concerned because all form of the transmission lines, whether it is a shielded twisted pair, unshielded twisted pair, or coaxial cable are concerned are nothing but it is basically some or kind, other kind of example of the filter design. So, in that case, we are now going to come across the two different terminologies or parameters that is the theta and the gamma, okay, along with the alpha, beta. So, let us define and all these things, okay. So, theta is nothing but it is the transfer constant, okay, of the two-port network. And what is the transfer constant in terms of the ABCD parameter? You will get cos hyperbolic inverse root over of A into D. So, that this equation, right half section, this magnitude, you can say that uh, what will be as far as your filter design concerned, okay, what is the rate of transfer? This rate of transfer will be decided by this equation one, this gentleman. And this gentleman says, my value is cos 
hypergonic inverse root over of a into d where a into and d are the parameters of the abcd parameters or the transmission parameter of t parameter do this okay so from there you can get the transfer uh, constant what about the propagation constant or in other words it is also okay uh, what about the propagation constant if it is so then propagations decide that what is the magnitude of propagation of a signal okay when it is being transmitted through a particular that particular type of filter so remember each and every filter it doesn't matter how whether it is rc type or even whether it is a lc type okay because no l or c is actually purely reactive in, uh, in nature it has some kind of resistance okay okay it's a larger in reactive but there is a some resistance similarly no resistance is exactly pure it also has may have some kind of influence of the frequency even at the higher temperature range okay so your gamma is nothing but it is basically a propagation constant which is basically a sum of the two factors that is attenuation constant and the phase constant phase constant is the imaginary term where alpha is basically representing the the attenuation okay uh, of the your control system of your network theory you have seen okay as far as the s plane is concerned so alpha is representing the amount of resistance or the reluctance introduced by the electrical network whenever the signal or the spectrum is passing through it ought to try to pass through that particular conducting surface so alpha is the attenuation constant it decides the rate of loss the rate of uh, decay as far as that particular signal is concerned or the signal loss or the power loss or voltage loss you can say beta is deciding the phase at what rate it is able being able to travel without any loss okay so if alpha is equal to 0 so that means there is no loss and if beta is equal to 0 so that means there is a no signal it's a 100% attenuation okay no signal is allowed to pass so that's how by adjusting alpha and beta you will be able to handle the propagation constant along with the third factor that is the transfer constant okay and you would appreciate that as far as the any t section design or the delta section design is concerned okay you can interrelate all these parameters in terms of abcd parameter z parameter that table i have been already discussed and told you to refer the um, two point analysis okay but for our understanding point of view let us say we try to connect the jet parameter analysis with the abcd as far as the t section is concerned for our demonstration purpose so you know that ab value of a magnitude of a is nothing but z11 upon z21 so again i would insist you that to get this relationship okay so here you should refer the uh, as far as uh, these analysis are concerned that if you are uh, unable to recall then I would refer you that you should refer the two port analysis under this particular head. So, from two port analysis, we have been now referring that your A is equal to Z11 by Z21, and whereas D is equal to Z22 by Z11. So, therefore, A is equal to D. So, if it is A is equal to D, that means that is a symmetric nature. Okay, symmetric in circuit because Z11 is equal to Z22. So, by substituting the value of A and D, okay, in terms of Z1 and Z2, you can opt the value. Okay, so A and D in terms of Z1 and Z2, in terms of series R impedance of the network and the shunt impedance of the filter should be equal to twice Z2 upon plus Z1 upon twice of Z2. So you should get this value. Or in other words, 1 plus Z1 upon twice Z2. Okay. Well, similarly, gamma, what is that? That is the propagation constant. So I can get with the help of the cos hyperbolic root over AD. Now, if I will substitute this particular value AD because, okay, so A and D, so over here, so what I will get over here, so that is your Z11, uh, Z22, okay, and upon Z1 of whole square. So, okay, so from there, you would appreciate that I can get this in terms of Z1 and Z2. So your cos gamma is equal to cos hyperbolic inverse within bracket 1 plus Z1 upon cos of Z2. I would appreciate that don't try to cram these things, okay, derive it and you will be easily able to understand that from there, these equations are kept on coming. So you don't require to actually cram. Okay. So and cramming is the something is the worst thing what you need to do. Okay. Go ahead for very complicated equations, not for this, this kind of easy and simple equations. Okay. Let's see uh, further. As far as to continue our discussion, what about the theta? Okay, that is the transfer constant. So can I get my transfer constant? Yes, you can get your transfer constant from twice sign hyperbolic inverse root over of z1 upon 4z2. Okay. So where remember. In this case, from equation 5, 6, 7, okay, where if alpha is equal to 0, okay, so that is the transfer constant is 0, and gamma is equal to theta, in that case, gamma will be equal to theta, okay, because if alpha is 0, 
so gamma and theta that is the attenuation constant and the transfer constant both will be equal and both will be equal of j of beta okay so their signal is remain unattenuated okay if there is no alpha of you that means there is no loss so that means there is no attenuation no decaying or no power loss while the signal is traveling through that particular filter okay so it's something the idealistic map okay we will see the reverse analogy also let us to do the have that let us broadly divide the uh, broadly try to understand the equation number 6 in two different cases let's say if what if the jodon ratio of jodon by j2 is greater than 0 okay so if jodon by j2 is greater than 0 so remember then j1 upon 4 j2 because 4 j2 you are increasing the denominator so if you are increasing the denominator so that case the uh, whole factor should always remain positive because j1 and j2 have the same sign okay so it doesn't matter whatever is but it should be remain positive right so to achieve that you have to for the equation number 9 fine similarly what if this factor z1 upon 4 z2 is less than 0 if z1 by 4 z2 is less than 0 remember you will get a imaginary fine less than 0 is the negative value so you will get the imaginary phase so there we are getting a phase you are allowing a phase shifting property so that means in this case the attenuation is zero if attenuation is zero then your alpha is equal to zero then you substitute this value so what you are getting j sin beta by 2 is equal to should of right hand side and what was in right hand side root over z1 upon 4z2 so from there you are getting beta is equal to twice of sin inverse root over of z1 by 4z2 okay so what an very important finding you got from here that as far as this equation is concerned i would insist that you are for free transmission okay for in one way you can say that theoretically a lossless transmission your ratio of z1 by 4z2 this factor should be greater than minus 1 but should be less than 0 should be less than 0 okay now what if that if 4 by z2 upon 4 by z2 becomes a negative because if it is positive so it falls it is greater than minus 1 so what if it is a negative if it is a negative then mod of z1 by 4 z2 is obviously greater because it's a mod value so from there it signifies the free transmission of the loss remember the okay? free transmission of the signal or the spectrum okay so from there uh, you uh, this analogy is developed that as far as the free transmission of the signal is concerned okay or the lossless transmission is signal is concerned the ratio of z1 by 4 z2 should be always less than 0 but at no circumstances it will allow to less than minus 1 it should be always greater than minus 1 so it will fall between these two range okay? very 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 important property okay i would uh, suggest that now you remember this can you can treat or these small relationship between these two slides numbers uh, 16 and 17 you can use for your uh, one marks gate related examination problem doesn't matter what which gate year is definitely one question you will definitely get or two question couple of questions you will definitely relate uh, from the filter design okay as far as the in electronics antenna wave propagation is concerned uh, network analysis synthesis is concerned in the fundamental subject or whether in the um, high voltage engineering or other i will say that electrical engineering or uh, in electrical and electronics engineering are concerned whether you talk about the high voltage engineering Okay, the electromagnetics, uh, electromagnetics in telecommunication area also, network theory or the circuit theory or network analysis, okay, synthesis or the filter designs are concerned. In these areas, definitely you will get one or two questions based on this interrelation of topology. Very very important. Okay, so uh, with this, I am concluding. Cut off frequency is something I have been already discussed. This is just for your information. So from here, I uh, says that with the help of by establishing the relationship between Z1 and Z2, you will be able to find out the full transmission reason as far as your filter design is concerned. In the next uh, circuit, we will continue. Uh, sorry, in the next lecture, we will continue our discussions. Uh, what we are going to stop here under the other basic relations in the filter, and uh, then we will finally conclude our classifications also in the next uh, particular lecture. Till then. Good luck.